So we return again to funerary arts, and we're looking at the sarcophagus with philosopher Orant and Old and New Testament scenes, amongst others. So wealthy patrons, pagans, Jews, and Christians alike need sarcophagi. And these are almost always going to be marble. And the imagery on the coffin is like that in the painting of the catacombs. And what makes this one interesting is it can be read in two different ways. Again, these are mass-produced, so the manufacturer wants to make it as universal as possible. And here, Christianity is coming into Rome, but again, it's still a small subset, very small subset of the total population. But there's enough there that there's going to be some demand that they want to fill. So many of these images will have universal concepts, universal images that both Christians and pagans can read. So let's read this as a Christian. As a Christian, here we see Jonah. Uh, again, that image of the man doubting God. Here we have an Arant letting us know that this is a holy scene. Here we see a figure that is probably God uh, of some form being depicted as an educated man. Here we see Jesus in what we know of as a very familiar form with the lamb uh, over his, uh, his shoulders as the good shepherd, as the shepherd to man. As we continue on, we have the creation of Adam uh, with God creating Adam, Adam being depicted here as a boy. So this is a Christian reading of this sarcophagus, but how else can we look at it? Well, let's try this again. Here we could be looking at Zeus uh, teaching his people. Uh, here we could be looking at a philosopher basically giving us this idea of education coming down from the gods. Here we can be looking at the realm of Poseidon, and this figure could be a spring figure, like a primavera, uh, so a fertility form. This can be read as pagan or Christian, and that's really important to this piece at this time is Christianity has become important enough that they need to take that into account. They need to create images that can be read both ways because there are enough clients looking for sarcophagi. Now, moving ahead, we're looking at the sarcophagus of Junius Bassus. And he's a prefect of Rome that converted to Christianity on his deathbed, very common at the time. And what we're looking at is the sarcophagus from almost 100 years later, about 90 years later. This is after Christianity has been accepted by the empire, which means the imagery can be much more open and forthright. And we see it's decorated on three sides, meaning it was meant to be against a wall. And it's separated into two registers, an upper and a lower register, each with five frames. Now, first of all, when you look at the architecture, when you look at the columns, etc., that's Greek and Roman influence. We see some Greek elements, especially in that upper level with the Ionic columns, and the, the lower level we see Roman, primarily Roman architecture being depicted. He would have done this to show a sense of education or worldliness. And then we see Old and New Testament scenes. What we see is this dogmatic statement about Christianity. At the top, on the upper register, in the middle, we see Jesus sort of in majesty. Jesus on his throne in heaven. Uh, Christ at the center. And what he's doing is he's passing the law in the form of a scroll to St. Peter and to St. Paul. Uh, there's an argument going on in early Christianity between Paul and James. I'm talking very early, uh, around 70 uh, BCE, about seven or sorry, 70 CE, 
uh, around the time of the Jewish revolts, about 77 CE, really. And this argument says that either Christianity is going to go the Jewish route with a lot of, you know, following rabbinical law and ritual cleansing, etc. That's what James wants. And then you have Paul who says that's not what Christianity is. It's more spiritual. And obviously, Paul will ultimately win that day. Getting back to the sarcophagus, we see the Old Testament primarily on the bottom prefiguring scenes from Jesus' life. For example, Jesus being brought before Pilate directly over Adam and Eve having eaten from the fruit of the forbidden tree because original sin leads to the crucifixion of Jesus. Just as an example. So, we're seeing those Old and New Testament scenes juxtaposed, sort of proving doctrine, proving that the Old Testament called for these New Testament ideas. When you look at the figures, they are a little bit better. They're a little more realistic, but we still have the large heads and blocky, somewhat clumsy figures that we've gotten used to at the end of the Roman Empire. Again, this is not because the Christians are particularly bad artists. This is because we're at the end of the empire and all of the art is starting to really suffer. So it's something to keep in mind. And finally, the focus of the scene here is one of triumph and salvation, not one of fear of death, which really sets it apart. It makes it more along the lines of the Etruscan tradition than the Greek tradition. We're not looking at people fearing death. We're looking at people looking forward to the afterlife. 